Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Today, I want to talk about securing traffic on your AWS with what we call multi-layered security using HEProxy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly talk about HEProxy, because you might be aware of HEProxy. Then I'm going to talk about the concept of multi-layered security. And I'm going to also give a quick demo today. Uh, you might be aware of HA Proxy because we're a very famous open source software load balancer. Uh, we are the company as HA Proxy Technologies behind the reputation of HA Proxy itself. And we say uh, as one of the fastest, if not the fastest, software load balancer in the world. Um, we have a product called HA Proxy One, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, if you use HA Proxy as an open source load balancer or with us, Customers use HA Proxy for basic load balancing. They use us for very high performance load balancing when they have low latency and very high traffic. And also load balancing at scale when they have application sprawl. They have thousands of applications and millions of requests across them. And the topic of my conversation today is about security. So they take all of that traffic and they deploy it with security layers to protect the traffic against threats, whatever threat the threats are, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit. Um, when we talk about the use cases, we see a lot of patterns. We see service mesh patterns. We see API gateway. There's now an AI gateway when you're protecting LLMs against threats and rate limiting based on tokens. Load balancing as a service when you have a lot of, lot of applications and many other use cases. But ultimately, we are known for our performance. We are known for load balancing 2 million requests per second on a single Graviton2 instance on AWS. We're probably going to take that blog post down soon because we've surpassed those, sur uh, surpassed those metrics on the Graviton3 and Graviton4 instances already. So we're going to publish a new one very soon but very well known for our, secure, uh, for our performance. So today, the topic is about protecting traffic with multi-layered security. So what does that really mean? Most customers or most companies start somewhere around here. They have a lot of applications, and they load balance traffic into them, whether that's web traffic, database traffic, whatever that is. But they end up somewhere around here. They have a lot of load balancers around those applications. Hopefully, and in my case, HA proxy, right? And we call this the edge. And I'm going to talk about using HA proxy to create the edge. And why? Because our customers fight a multi layered battle, and they fight it with our multi layered security approach from application layer DDoS attacks to web scraping, brute forcing. Um, they also have scrapers, so now they are not only search scrapers, they are also AI crawlers, and they need to protect sometimes against those, right? And then ultimately targeted exploitation. That's a single person that's trying, trying to get through to that specific application. Here's a related statistic. We actually run our own edge network as well for our properties and our customers. And across billions of requests a day, we see roughly 30% of the traffic being anomalous. That means they're bots, they're unusual, suspicious traffic, they're triggering the WAF. So 30%, that's a lot of traffic that's actually anomalous on our own edge network. And our customers see exactly the same. So a lot of your traffic is probably not supposed to be there, and you need to protect against it. So that's the topic. And so let's talk about how. We call it multi-layered security for a reason. Because I very often talk about detection and decision. And it's not enough to say, I'm going to run a web application firewall, or I'm going to run bot control, or I'm going to calculate my rates and run rate limiting. That's not enough. You need to detect what's happening on every single of these layers, and then make a decision based on those layers together to decide what to do about that traffic. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of these layers, what it means, and how you can do that in your own HA proxy. So the first is access control. It's actually very simple. 
It's a deny list, allow list. Should I deny this IP address? Should I allow internal traffic? Should I deny this JA3 fingerprint? Because that's a bot that I've seen. I'm going to just deny it. That's really fast, but what's important is we do it really fast by allowing to have a list of millions of items, millions of IP addresses in a single list, and very quickly deciding whether we should allow that or not. So we're going to detect that. Next, we're going to calculate rates. So we're going to take a look at a request that came in through HAProxy and take a look at a key. The key could be anything like an IP address, the path of the request, the label of the bot. We're going to look at bots later. And we're going to take a look at that and calculate the rate of those requests and later on decide what to do about that. But the problem is, when you calculate rates, you won't believe how many customers I talk to when they say, well, I run rate limit in, and I spend all my time trying to figure out what the limit should be. Because static limits are hard. Should it be 1,000 requests a second? Should it be 2,000 requests a second? What if I have a spike? Right? What if I have a spike every day at 8 AM because everybody reads news at breakfast? That's hard. So we do it differently. We say, well, let's calculate the aggregate rates across every single HA proxy I have, and let's calculate statistics. And then I can look at, was the 95th percentile of the request rate the same hour yesterday during that spike? And then I say, I'm going to block that if it's over 3x of the 95th percentile, which allows me to set dynamic limits without necessarily wondering what the limit should be. So the limit is basically the function of the traffic itself. It's statistics, but in this here, can I call it AI, right? This is AI, just so you know. Then we take a look at bots. And we've looked at over 100 billion requests a day on our own edge network, and we classified each one of them if it's a bot or not. And we created a model to find out if this is a bot on your traffic. So every request gets a score, 0 to 100, is it a bot or not, and a label. But we also identify good crawlers. Again, popularly, this is Google. And yes, it's Google. And no, it's not pretending to be Google. Or this is our friend from Anthropic or OpenAI trying to crawl you. And you deserve to make a decision, do I allow this traffic or not? So we will tell you this is Anthropic bot. And then you can make a decision about that. Finally, we're going to take a look at the web application firewall. Most people think security, and they say, OK, we're going to slap a WAF on it and be done with it. But that's not enough, because typical WAF is slow. And so like a benchmark is a WAF can do 300 requests a second on a CPU. We benchmark ours to 300,000 requests a second on a CPU. Because it has to be fast. We're known for security. So we have all of these detection layers, right? Now we can decide what to do. We're going to decide, do we deny this request based on all of these layers? Do we allow it? Do we tarp it so do we slow it down? Do we serve it a JavaScript challenge or do we serve it a captcha? Or anything like that. And we make a business decision about that. Because it's your business decision what to do based on the data I just gave you. Right? And finally, we've decided to allow that request, so we're going to route it to the backend because ultimately we're still load balancing. But we're going to augment it with GeoIP data, device information, rewrite the headers, the path, everything that a standard load balancer does. But we're going to do it after we've allowed the request. So we just talked about taking a step at detection and running through access control, rate calculation, bot detection, WAF, and then making a decision on the traffic. Right? But there are edge cases at the edge, as I call it. The most popular right now I talk about is LLMs. You might be running custom models, and you need to protect your API keys. 
or I have a customer running um, AI model on AWS using the AWS models, but they don't want to give developers access to the AWS model directly, so they route it through HAProxy. But they also, it's a, it's a financial services company. They don't want anybody to submit a credit card number into the prompt, so they detect PII at the load balancing layer and make sure that it cannot be done. And when I'm doing AI, I cannot rate limit by IP addresses and by requests, because that actually doesn't matter. The tokens do. So they rate limit by the amount of prompt tokens the specific API key is sending. And they can do that at the load balancing layer. Now, you've done all of the detection and decisioning. But ultimately, the decisions, those are your business decisions. And we wanted to make it easy to make those business decisions, figure out what to do. So I built a maximum protection security recipe, as I call it. And that's a recipe I can give you that pre-made some of the decisions for you. And you can take them, and you can adjust them as you want. And we deny list bots, IP addresses. We rate limit bots over an anomalous threshold. Actually, a lot of customers, if it's a bot and it triggers a WAF, we'll block it right away. But a lot of our customers decide if it's a human and they trigger a WAF, we're going to let it through once or twice. And then we're going to block it. Because it might be a false positive and you never know. And we don't want to disrupt a payment or a request from a human. But if you, they keep going, then we're going to block them. So we built that decision into the recipe so you can try it. Now, I made it configurable so you can set up security level to adjust like rate limit. Like, I'm, a, I'm under attack, so let's reduce the limits, the multiplier of the 95th percentile. Use JavaScript challenges or not, because I can't use them with APIs, right? There's no JavaScript to be run. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to a live demo of showing you the result of running that security recipe using a dashboard and showing you what's happening to the traffic. So what you're looking at right now is I'm running a load test on my own system. And in the system, I'm running a number of attacks. And what I'm seeing here is that, as you can see here on the action taken, like third of my traffic is being blocked by a bot. Let's see if I can make it bigger. There you go. So that's very curious, right? So I want to investigate that. So I'm going to filter. And I'm going to say I'm going to filter by the action taken is WAF blog bot. So obviously, that's now 100%. I filtered by it. But look at that. Um, this is really curious. Like the, the path cookie new has so many more requests with action taken than anything else. I want to take a look at that. Is that the path that's being attacked? And I want to investigate it. At the same time, by the way, take a look at the IP addresses. Like, Every IP address there has one request, and then that one at the top, which is localhost, is 2,000 requests. So let's investigate that. I'm going to go to my Request Explorer. And here, this is a log of every single request that went through the edge of the HAProxy instances. And I'm going to open the Security tab. And now I have all the detail I need. And this is why we made that decision as a business decision. We block this request because, again, make it bigger. Score is 60. This is a 60% chance this is a bot, which is pretty high. And it triggered a web application firewall. So we should block it. We should not let it through. And we successfully blocked it, right? So it's blocked. But I want to know why. I want to know a little bit more detail about why that happened. So I'm actually going to click on the rule IDs right here. And this tells me every single web application uh, firewall rule that was triggered. And honestly, there's a cookie that says select star from users. Well, that's not a false positive. We know that, right? I don't have to worry about it. But if it was, then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to click on those specific rules, and I'm going to generate a whitelist. And I'm going to whitelist those rules because it was a false positive. In this case, it wasn't. Next, what I want to do is 
I know from the previous dashboard, this specific attack is coming from one IP address. I already looked at that IP address. So I want to block that IP address. We're blocking the traffic, but it's wasting my CPU. Why should I pay for all of that CPU? So I'm going to take that IP address and go to my files. And I, this is where I have the IP deny list. And I'm just going to open the deny list. And I'm going to add the IP address there, add the key, and submit it. And now I added this IP address to the deny list. So I will still continue blocking them, because now they're on the deny list. But they're no longer wasting all of my CPU and processing time on figuring out, is this the bot or not? Is this a WAF attack or anything else? Right? Because ultimately, they're attacking me. I block that IP address. So let's go back. So customers very often ask, well, is it fast? We're doing a lot of processing. And how do I make sure that this is fast? Because we're known for performance, and you need performance. So I did a benchmark of every single AWS instance that I could get my hands on, running standard requests, running TLS termination, and also adding bot management and web application, web application firewall from us. And I cannot add statistically significant latency on the first time, time to first byte when processing the requests through the security layer. And we're running it right now with over 100 billion requests a day on our own edge. So we know it's fast enough. And sometimes customers ask, well, why do I do it this way? Why do I don't do it differently? Because it gives you consistent results, irrespective of where you run. Hopefully, you're migrating everything to AWS. We're here, right? But you might still have some workloads on premise that you have not migrated yet. And you might need the same protection for those. So you can run the same security layer there, right? And latency will not become an issue compared to running everything separately, running WAF, bot management, and everything separately, right? And most importantly for us, because of very, we're a very privacy-focused company, without any third-party requests, all of the processing is done inside your own infrastructure, your own VPC. We don't call home to HA proxy to classify the requests. So it's all running on your own infrastructure. So we talked about many use cases, securing traffic for all of these use cases. But I also want to invite you to our own conference in San Francisco in June. Um, we're going to have a lot of open source users, a lot of our customers. We have a call for papers open. So if you're using HEProxy open source, and a lot of people here do, then please submit a paper. And if you have any more questions, I actually have a um, couple t-shirts here. So if you have a question, you're welcome to a t-shirt. And at the same time, please come to our booth in uh, 571. It's roughly right there if you have any more questions. Thank you. <laughs>